this video, we're going to look at some questions about functions. Now, you're probably most used to the kind of question where you're given a function and you're asked to differentiate it or integrate it or what some of the properties of the function are or maybe to sketch the function. But these three questions are a bit different. As you can see in these three questions, instead of being given the function and being asked about some of its properties, this time you're given some of the properties of the function and you're asked to think of what function might fit those properties. Let me just say a couple of things about these questions before we actually move on to looking at how to answer them. So in the first two questions, questions one and question two, you'll see that the functions f1 and f2 are defined on the whole real line. So f1 and f2 F1 and F2 have got domain R. That means that they have to be defined and have a real value at every single point of the real line, with no exceptions. For the function F3, you aren't even told what the domain of the function is, and you have to think up for the domain for yourself to figure out what the function is going to be. So what do you do if you're faced with questions like this about functions that you don't know what they are, but you're just given their properties? Well, the best thing you can do is to think through some of the functions you already know and think about what properties they've got and see if any of them might help. So let's start with a very well-known function. And this function I'm going to tell you some of its properties. I'll also tell you what the function is. So no guesswork on this occasion. What is this function f? This is a function f of x equals sine x. What's the domain of this function? Well, this is defined on the whole real line and takes real values at every single point of the real line. So the domain of f is the real line r. What's the range of this function? That's the set of values taken by f as you look through the domain. Well, this takes every value between minus 1 and 1 inclusive. So the range of this function is the closed interval from minus 1 up to 1. which is the same as all real numbers y, which are between minus 1 and 1 inclusive. Is this function continuous? Yes, it is. It's one of the nicest, smoothest functions you're going to meet. Is it differentiable? Again, yes. And is it bounded? Yes, because it takes values only between minus 1 and 1 inclusive. So that was easy. Does it help us with any of our three questions? Well, unfortunately, if you look down your list of properties that we're after, this function doesn't solve any of our three questions. But it's a good one to look at for a start. Let's move on to some more functions and see if they're more helpful. Now this function you may not be quite so familiar with, so I'm not going to tell you what the function is yet, but here's a sketch of the function that you can see and I'm going to tell you about some of its properties and then see if you can guess the function. I'll give you the formula for the function at the end. So what's the domain of this function? This one is again defined on the whole real line and it takes real values. In fact, it only takes the values 0 and 1. So the domain of this function, f, is the whole of the real line, but the range, the set of values this function takes, has only got two points in it, namely 0 and 1. Is this function continuous? No, you can see it's got a jump uh, when x gets to value 0. I've assigned um, the value 0 to 0, so notice that f of 0 is equal to 0 in this picture. 
Is this function continuous? No. And if it's not continuous, it can't be differentiable either. It fails differentiability at the same point, zero. Is it bounded? Yes, it is. It's only taking the values 0 to 1, so it's a bounded function. Does this one help us with any of the questions? Yes, this one does work to help give us an answer to question 1. I should tell you what the formula for this function actually is. Well, as you can see, it's 0 if x is non-positive, and it's 1 if x is strictly positive. So let's write that in. f of x is 0 if x is less equal to 0, and it's 1 if x is strictly greater than 0. Let's have a look at another. Here's another fairly well-known function. I'll tell you what the function is at the end. Let's write down some of its properties. This one, for change, is not defined on the whole real line. It's only defined on most of the real line. It's defined on all real numbers that are not equal to 0. So the domain of this function is real numbers x, so that x is not equal to 0. And the range, the set of values taken, again, it doesn't take a value of 0 either, because it doesn't cross the x-axis. So again, it's the same set, though I'll use y for a change. The range is y, those real numbers y, so that y is not equal to 0. Now the next one is interesting for this function. Is the function continuous on its domain? Because you can't really ask about continuity at points where the function is undefined. So you can only ask on its domain. And this function is continuous and differentiable on the whole of its domain. So we get the answers yes for continuous. Yes, for differentiable. Is it bounded? No, because you can see it goes off to plus infinity as you approach the y-axis from the right. It goes off to minus infinity as you approach zero from the left. So it's not bounded. So this one doesn't help with questions one or two. And it doesn't immediately help with question three. But we'll see later that we can fix it to make it help us with question three. And what is this function? This, of course, is in fact the function y equals f of x equals 1 over x. OK, let's have a look at one final function. This is another function you may know. The domain of this function, this one is defined on the whole real line. The range of the function is only the non-negative real numbers. The function is continuous, no breaks in this function. But it's not differentiable at zero. So the answer is no because it's got that sharp spike at the origin, which you can see there, and that stops it being differentiable at the origin. So here's one that's continuous and not differentiable, and so we found one that gives us an answer to question two. Is this function bounded? No, it's not. So what is this function? This is the function f of x equals mod x, or the absolute value of x. Which is equal to x if x is non-negative. It's equal to minus x if x is negative. So what we've got so far is we found examples that work for questions 1 and questions 2. We haven't quite got one for question 3 yet. We're going to have to work a little bit harder to do that but we'll do that in a moment. So let's see what we know so far. Okay, for question one then, we got the function f1 of x 
being naught if x less than or equal to naught. And 1 if x is strictly positive. For question 2, we've got the function f of x equals mod x. We haven't yet got an example for question 3, but we've got one that nearly works because we've got the function 1 over x, which blows up to infinity as you approach 0, but it's supposed to be defined at a bounded interval to satisfy question 3, so we're going to have to modify it a bit. So for question 3, we have to say what i is. So we can take, for example, i to be the open interval 0, 1, which is x in R, for which naught is strictly less than x is strictly less than 1. And then we can define f from i to R, f3 from i to R, by f3 of x equals 1 over x. And then we've got enough of the function that the function values will tend to plus infinity as x tends to 0 from the right. So this will solve question 3. So what are our conclusions from all this? Well, if you're given questions that ask you to find functions which satisfy a certain collection of properties, you're not going to have much chance of answering them unless you know quite a lot about various different functions already. So you should have a collection of functions in your drawer which you can bring out and look at and immediately spot what properties they have got and what properties they haven't got. And the more functions you know, the more chance you have of finding one that either already fits the facts or which you can fix, like we did with function F3, to solve problem 3. Mm -hmm.